How to know if your friend is toxic. Number one is the primary way your friend uses to bond to talk about other friends, a mutual friend of you both. Is fodder about another party the primary way you guys interact? And the reason why we know this is toxic is you're not going to be free from this this level of gossip. You know, they're going to be talking about you to another friend. That's their way of relating and they it's not their fault. That's how they they believe they had a family dynamic that represented that. And so they're just going to keep it up their whole life. And of course, yes, naturally, this is some of human nature is to talk about others and you know, have that contrast, have that, what is that person doing compared to me and blah, 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 blah. And, and to even connect with, oh, we both know this mutual person, what's up with this. But if that's the only driving force that your friend, that, I mean, that, that's all you have and for connection and like-mindedness, that's, that's a pretty big red flag. And you've got to minimize, you've got to have minimal time with this kind of person because they're two-faced and they're not evolving. The, the five people that you talk to the most are going to be what you're most like. So if you're not with people who are at least aiming for self-improvement, self-development, um, self-awareness, and empathy, compassion, and just continual growth, then you're not going to be growing as fast. You want to be with other people people who are trying to be their best self, not stuck in the rut of their patterns and their kind of, their kind of old, like comfortable, how do I make myself better? How do I bring myself up by putting people down? No, you don't want to be around people like that. And it's best to just distance yourself because they think of you as fodder to talk about. And you don't really want them to have any new information so that they can continually have you as uh, fodder or it material for them to you know, suck dry and talk about with other people. And so that's the number one sign of a toxic friend. Second sign of a toxic friend is if actually in person when you are there and there's a third party that they actually do little jabs about you in person. Now, if they if they do the behind the back thing, that's one out, that's one thing. If they also have little jabs at you in front of other people, because you know you know those friends where one on one they're one person, but then if another person's there, sometimes it's like they have this strange little dynamic where they they might put that person down to you, or they put you down to them. I mean, again, toxic. And it could just be a little jab, like, for instance, I was hanging out with two friends and one of them made a comment about how the way, like, she said something about how because I moved in an uncoordinated way, she, like, pointed that out and acted like, and you do, and she does yoga every day and kind of had this, like, can you believe she's still so inflexible and uncoordinated? And I had an instant retort. I was like, yeah. That's why I do yoga, because I have problems with flexibility and being uncoordinated, so I work on it. So you're trying to jab me, this is the part I didn't say, you're trying to jab me for the thing I'm already well aware of and already working on. Thank you, that is so kind. Okay, I only said the first part, which is, yeah, that's why I work on it. Um, I kind of had more of a neutral, way more neutral kind of tone, but it was there was still an edge of, I'm sorry, excuse me? Please don't disrespect me. But um, anyway, so that's the second sign. They're actually overt about their disrespect and they have those little belittling jabs that they'll then say, oh, what, what do you mean? I didn't mean anything by that. It's like, okay, okay. And third sign of a toxic friend is a toxic friend will just always want you to be in the same dynamic and the same personality and character that you were when you originally met. Like, in, they always kind of want to have that similar consistency. So say you met and you were always like, you're kind of 
way of relating was drinking. Your way of relating was talking about this person. Your way of relating was exchanging writing, whatever it was. Say you've gotten past any of those stages, like say you're not really in drinking culture, or say you're maybe you're not writing anymore, maybe you're focused on another thing, or maybe you're just kind of outgrown aspects of the personality dynamic overall where you kind of always used to yield and be the people pleaser or the person that gave them a ride or the person that was just kind of the giver and they were the taker but and that was fine for you at one point but now it's just not how the dynamic is because you've just grown up well if they don't take that growth whether it's no longer being a part of drinking culture no longer sinning writing no longer having a similar personality or you know then they're 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 sometimes just a friend that's part of a phase of life and that was great but they may not be with you in the, as an ongoing friend. And that's and that sucks and it's hard, but it's hard to admit, especially, you know, I'm a very nostalgic person. But there's just certain friendships that run their course because you are evolving. And so you may not be evolving, both evolving in the same direction, or you may, devol may be devolving or going through a funk and they're kind of in a different stage or, they, or vice versa. And, or maybe your personality is just like, this seems like I'm in a kind of familiar rut where I'm the one that's giving them rides and helping them and I always go to their house and they never come to mine or, you know, those kinds of dynamics. You either, you either have to realize that friend, it may not be about them being toxic, but sometimes things just, go, you kind of grow out of people or, and that's kind of more of a f phase of life friend. And what are some other ways that you know a friend is toxic? You know if they're toxic if they really kind of almost have a need for you to distract or hide from themselves. Like if it's not even about you, it's just almost you being this like ultimate numbing or distractant or this person that can give them life. It's almost like they need to kind of they just had some of your if they could just have you there as a as a person as a mannequin and then you, a sounding board but there's not um, it could be anybody they're just like maybe they're calling this person or that and they're just kind of like almost desperate to feed off of an extrovert or a, they're just needing really human contact and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I understand. I mean, there's something wrong with it, but it's not. It's understandable. We all have that. Sometimes we just don't want to be alone. But a sign of not wanting to be alone isn't. It's it's kind of somebody that's kind of. They're they're not actually able to to again be present and give to you this in a reciprocal way because they're so intent on hiding from themselves that the that. They're kind of more intent on usually this dynamic being about both of you getting together to escape yourselves and you both have to be on that same page or it's just not going to work. If you're kind of almost like, oh, I just, I need, I don't really need this phone call, this Zoom or this whatever as much as this person and I don't want to feel forced into it just because they seem like really keen and desperate almost to have just anybody to, to be a sounding board. Cause sometimes, you know, it's just some, and this is a hard thing because it's really hard to communicate. Well, I, I don't reciprocate needing this right now. It's so horrible, you know, cause I mean, you want, you want somebody to be there for you, even if they're kind of tired and you want to just kind of vent. That's why it's just, it's just a tough thing. Cause like sometimes it's no one's fault. There's just toxic elements that come in to play and it's not necessarily a toxic person it's just a toxic behavior that that's unconscious and we all have the we all do that you know but sometimes that there's this feeling of like it puts them in this dynamic of feel, you feel pressure to be there for them but you're all so drained and tired from them but then you feel this obligation this duty and that really ruins friendships and relationships because then you're not showing up with this reciprocal, both of you like really excited and feeling kind of 
refreshed and revigorated from it. It's, it's one of you drains, the, like sucks the blood of the other, and then the other person collapses and falls asleep, and then that person's now energized. Okay, well, I can't, we can't always be the person providing the energy and life force and then collapsing. You know, again, it's like the more you kind of realize who am I becoming and what am I needing, and it's okay. I shouldn't just give and be there for this person out of fear that they'll be mad or guilt that they'll be mad or obligation or duty. Like those are all like really, you know, corroding effects on friendship because they're not coming from an authentic place. They're coming from a duty bound. I have to do this, you know. So and it's it's tough because not everyone's on the same page. Like sometimes. Some you, you might be in the mood to hang out and just have that social contact and they may just be the opposite. And other times you think you're not in the mood to hang out with someone, but as soon as you do, you just feel like it's so much better. So you also don't want to get to that point where you're so self-isolated that you're almost starting to have this view of the world like, oh, everyone's so draining. And then because it actually makes you then almost had the self-fulfilling prophecy of being more of a hermit and then you you're starting to isolate too much and get too in your head you're way too you're in so much rumination that you think that everybody is you don't even remember who they are and you have an idea of them that they're like they're a draining person they're not or you have this idea that they're expecting this and all of that could just be also a fiction in your head so yeah, these are, I would say, these are the main signs that you can tell a toxic friend or maybe just a friendship that's growing stale or that's run its course or that, you know, it's not that sometimes phases can come and go. It's kind of, Sometimes there's an ebb and flow where you're just going through a phase and then you'll pop out and, and just resume just like you've always been and pick up right where you left off. So just be kind of tune in and realize when there's actual, when, when you can, act, when you should actually burn the bridge or when you could actually just kind of realize, well, I may not, this is just kind of a phase and I'm still, I'm still friends with them, but I, I'm, I'm noting some changes in me that make me feel like a, a kind of drained or depleted and whatever it may be, just kind of tune in and, and, you know, forgive yourself for not you know, forgive yourself for not thinking you have to feel a certain way and, 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 and realizing you don't, your sense, your body's picking up things about this person that are just going to help you assess whether it's something that's helping you grow or something that's kind of keeping you caught or stagnant in a past, in nostalgia, in, in obligation, in a, in an uncomfortable give take whatever it may be, just evaluate with compassion toward them and giving them the benefit of the doubt, but then also in compassion toward yourself and in realizing, you know, you're allowed to change and you're allowed to be a different person and you may have different friends in different phases. All right, hope that was helpful.